Being a famous musician is a pretty tough gig. Sure, there are plenty of perks, like fame and fortune, but you've got to put in some pretty long hours if you want to succeed. Plus, there's always the chance you could get shot, knifed, or tortured to death. Because when you reach the peak of musical perfection, there's always some lunatic out there who wants to drag you back down, and bury you six feet under. Number 5 goes to Justin Bieber. In November 2016, Justin Bieber made headlines after punching an overzealous fan. Many criticized the pop star for his actions, but maybe we should all be a little more understanding. After all, the guy is constantly mobbed by groping groupies, and sometimes, these die-hard fans want a lot more than an autograph. Take Dana Martin, for example, a psycho who puts Annie Wilkes to shame. A rapist and murderer serving two life sentences. Martin was a hardcore believer. The man wrote several letters to the Canadian superstar, and even got a Bieber tattoo on his leg while in prison. Obviously, Bieber never responded to the freaky fan mail, which made Martin a tad angry. He was also upset Bieber was turning into a bad boy, and it didn't help that Martin wanted his 15 minutes of fame. Determined to teach Bieber a lesson, Martin convinced his cellmate, Mark Stake, to castrate and kill the singer in exchange for $50,000, a Ferrari, and a farm once owned by Michael J. Fox. Stake was a few tracks short of a whole album, on top of that, Martin promised $2,500 for each of Bieber's cajones. So when Stake was released from his New Mexico prison, he teamed up with his nephew, Tanner Ruane, and the duo struck out for New York. But before they reached Bieber, Martin wanted his hitman to castrate and kill the two witnesses who'd helped put him behind bars. Fortunately, the killers made a wrong turn along the way and ended up in Canada, where Stake was arrested for violating his parole. And after officials found a sketch of Bieber, plus some scary-looking hedge clippers, in Stake's car, the whole plot fell apart pretty quickly. Dane Martin would eventually plead guilty to two counts of attempted murder, and Bieber would live to sing another day private parts intact. Number 4 goes to 50 Cent. If you want to become a hip-hop artist, you should probably buy a Kevlar vest. Ghostface Killer was shot in the neck and arm. The notorious B.I.G. was murdered in a drive-by shooting. Tupac Shocker was shot multiple times in 1994 before he was killed in 1996. It seems like rapping is a dangerous business, a tragic fact that 50 Cent found out the hard way. In 2000, while struggling to hit the big times, 50 Cent was sitting in a car outside his grandmother's house in Queens, when an assassin walked up to the vehicle and unloaded his gun. Nine bullets tore into the rapper's body, slamming into his leg, hip, arm, right hand, chest, and the left side of his face. After emptying his clip, the gunman managed to escape, and while he was never arrested, many suspect the attacker was Daryl Bohm a man who worked as Mike Tyson's bodyguard. Before Baum could be brought to justice, however, he was shot down, possibly in retaliation for going after 50 Cent. As for the rapper, it took six weeks before Fitty could walk by himself and five months before he totally recovered. The attack also permanently altered his speech patterns, as a gunshot destroyed his mouth, in fact, a fragment of a bullet is still lodged in his tongue. As the singer explains to Vanity Fair, doctors didn't remove the bullet as it would have further damaged his nerves. But as Rolling Stone put it, his lazy tongue and the hole in his jaw gave, 50 Cent, a slur like no one in hip-hop. Or as 50 Cent himself put it, getting shot just totally fixed my instrument. Number 3 goes to Bjork. There are two kinds of people in the world. Those who love Bjork and those who think she sounds like Bobcat Goldthwait. Ricardo Lopez definitely falls into the first group, being obsessed with the Icelandic star. He would create art in her honor, and detail in his diary about how he wanted to become Björk's best friend. He also wrote about his suicidal and murderous thoughts, so he probably wasn't the best candidate for Björk's BFF. Of course, no deranged fantasy lasts forever 
and in 1996, the 21-year-old Lopez was shocked to learn Bjork was in a relationship with the musician Goldie. As a racist, Lopez was incensed his beloved singer was dating a black man. Wanting to punish Bjork, he began working on a deliciously sadistic plan, like a true psycho, he videotaped 22 hours of his rantings and ravings. Originally, Lopez planned on making a bomb full of HIV-infected needles, but when that didn't work, he hollowed out a book and put an acid bomb inside its pages. The plan was to mail the bomb from his Florida home to Bjork's London residence. On September 12, 1996, Lopez put his explosive package in the mail. Then, after painting his face with red, green, and black paint, Lopez shot himself on camera, as Bjork music played in the background. Authorities found his body days later and, after checking his diary and tapes, the cops went into panic mode. Thankfully, the chaps at Scotland Yard stopped the bomb before it arrived at Bjork's doorstep. Number 2 goes to Victoria Beckham. As one of the most famous pop stars of the 90s, Victoria Posh Spice Beckham has had quite a bit of spice in her life. But on top of all the glitz and glamour, this British superstar has been the victim of multiple criminal schemes. For starters, she's received all sorts of disturbing death threats, including altered photos depicting bloody wounds on both her and her child. Of course, that pales in comparison to the events of January 2000, when the group of thugs planned on kidnapping Posh and her eight-month-old son, Brooklyn. Fortunately, the Beckhams were saved in the nick of time, although the crooks managed to escape as well. Just two years later, five more people were arrested for plotting to kidnap Beckham, although there's a bit of debate surrounding the story. As it turns out, the scheme was exposed after the news of the world paid a hefty sum to a convicted crook, who then ratted out the alleged kidnappers. Thanks to this revelation, the five people in question were released, which probably made Beckham more than a little anxious. But perhaps the scariest incident occurred in March 2000. While rehearsing for a Spice Girls performance, Beckham was hustled to safety after a red dot suddenly appeared on her chest. Shortly afterward, a propped open door was discovered, and it was theorized a sniper had been preparing to take a shot. It just goes to show, while many want to be a celebrity, dealing with all these thugs just might be too much. And number one goes to Bob Marley. When Bob Marley said, every little thing is gonna be alright, he wasn't being glib. As the world's most famous Jamaican, this singer-songwriter knew all about smiling through adversity. Despite the world's stereotypical image of Jamaica, this island nation has seen quite a bit of suffering over the decades. In fact, back in the 70s, the country was divided by a bloody political war, a crazy conflict that almost ended Marley's singing career for good. In 1976, Jamaica was divided between two political parties, the Liberal People's National Party, Plug and Play, headed by Prime Minister Michael Manley and the right-wing Jamaican Labour Party, JLP, led by Edward Sialga. Fearing Manley was a communist, the US government armed the JLP, which led to street battles between gangsters allied with both groups. The police also got involved, and soon, hundreds of people were dead. At about this time, the plug-and-play asked Bob Marley if he wanted to do a concert in Jamaica. They promised it wouldn't be a political event but would rather be focused on uniting all of Jamaica. Marley agreed to perform, but immediately afterward, Prime Minister Manley moved the national elections to be held shortly after the concert, making it appear Marley was endorsing Manley by performing so close to election day in a plug-and-play event. This turn of events made someone, most likely JLP members, incredibly angry, and on December 3, 1976, at least three gunmen stormed Marley's home. They opened fire with machine guns, hitting the singer in the arm and wounding his wife and manager. While the assassins escaped, everyone survived the attack. Two days later, Marley went on stage as scheduled. The reggae king performed for 90 minutes and even showed off his bandaged wounds, proving he was one tough gong. So that's all in our countdown of 5 famous musicians who were almost murdered if you like this video please like share and subscribe also don't forget to comment cause your views matters.